week eight is when the uh, playoff rankings start coming out. So it doesn't matter till then. But they're, for the eyeball test, for me personally, uh, Clemson is not a top five team. Well, let's uh, play the homer card before we get into today's game. Uh, certainly last uh, week we saw uh, Michigan State, uh, uh, obviously n- number 25 against IU, but good game against IU. IU football, I mean, I know I'm an IU fan because I'm an IU alumni. I I'm, I'm I bleed uh, uh, Crimson, and I know you like IU as well. But I thought that IU played a very good game against a very good Michigan State. Uh, uh, Rutgers uh, come, goes down south to Bloomington. I think the Rutgers, uh, again, is Rutgers. So IU, uh, we we would think, has a, a pretty good practice win today. Yeah, I always laugh at Rutgers because uh, they claim to be, be the birthplace of college football. And I think the first college football game was actually played at Rutgers. Uh, if you go on Twitter and look up Rutgers, it's not even called Rutgers. It's called the birthplace because it's the birthplace of college football. But football has died at Rutgers. Uh, they don't even belong in Division One, uh, so they're going to get, probably get smacked around by IU today, which is pretty sad. And I don't don't mean anything bad by that, to you know, as far as IU goes. But if you're the birthplace of college football and that's what you're trying to build your legacy on, wouldn't you do everything you possibly could to like compete in college football? But they definitely can't. They shouldn't be Division One. They definitely shouldn't be the Big Ten. Uh, they should probably be a group of five team at, at most. But uh, I, their Twitter account always cracks me up because they don't even call themselves records. They call themselves the, the birthplace. My buddy Derek Schultz at the Aquarius Schultz Show, he's, he always calls it Rucker, and he's he's from that neck of the woods. And he's like, because they haven't earned the S yet. <laughs> I love it. it, it it's, it's, they're bad. I mean, <laughs> He's an IU guy too. Big uh, Ten matchup, or probably one of the best Big Ten matchups of the day. Big Ten Ten matches it up, and that's Purdue at Penn State. Uh, Penn State obviously ranked number twelve. Purdue uh, falling a little bit behind the eight ball as far as where we thought they would be at this year, uh, but certainly kind of still in the ballpark where, where we thought they'd be at this year. But Penn State certainly very tough number twelve team. Uh, they host the Purdue Boilermakers. Look for Penn State to. Uh, play a very good game here, but speaking of betting, I would also stay stay clear of this game. Yeah, I think Purdue needs to start looking to their head coach and uh, start going a different route here because uh, Brom definitely isn't getting it done at Purdue. Um, As far as right now, they just need to stick to being a a basketball school and worry about basketball because I'm starting to think as long as Brom is there, they are not going to get anything done at Purdue. I know they've had some big wins. Uh, It doesn't mean much, though, if you can't put a, a, a nice program together, get yourself eight, nine, ten wins a season or something like that. You know, they beat Ohio State last year, which is a nice program win, but nothing's come out of it. So I think you start looking at Jeff Brom there and maybe uh, looking at your options of getting another head coach. All right, let's get into the college football top 25. Rick Riggin, our official college football contributor, 917-889-8516 is our digit side. Don't know what happened to Tony D. Uh, we'll publicly shame him, uh, he, but that's okay. You know, we'll, we'll catch up with him. Maybe he'll call in the next half hour. Uh, maybe he didn't get eight by alligators. I think Matthew Embry did get eight by alligators. Uh, but let's <laughs> – uh, Bama and Clemson are off this weekend, so that brings us down to number three, Georgia at Tennessee. Big news out of Tennessee this week. Uh, um, uh Player from Tennessee gets arrested. I I should have had that open here, but I don't. Uh, but uh, basically, he said, "Where I'm from, we shoot cops." Not not a good look for the University of Tennessee. Obviously, hosting number three Georgia. That game is is going to be over before it even starts. But certainly, the other storyline there is the arrest of that Tennessee player and the comment that he made that's caught on video that's went viral now. Yeah, I, I know. Since then, he's publicly apologized. It was also not a good look for Tennessee with Jeremy Pruitt on the phone with him while he's being arrested. I don't remember what the context of that conversation, but it all wasn't a great look for Tennessee. I, I know before this arrest happened, uh, Phil Fulmer, you know, the legendary coach for Tennessee, he's the athletic director there now, and he he's still 100% behind Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee. So if that's still the case, I mean, cool, because – I think continuity is a, a a great thing, especially in college football. But at some point, you start got to start cutting ties. This is year two. Uh, I don't know if year three is going to be any better, but 
as far as the Georgia game today, have, it's not going to be a good day for Tennessee. No, it's not. So let's talk about a game that's really going to matter, Ohio State Buckeyes against the Michigan State. Now, I want to go back to last week's game. Now, we're going to see two different teams, uh, because I think you prepare differently for Ohio State than you do for Indiana. But if we see the same Michigan State game, Michigan State team, Ohio State's going to have no problem. But at the same time, I don't think we saw the real Michigan State last week against uh, Bloomington. So I think that Ohio State will give them, I mean, will we'll have a tough time on the road up, up there in um, Lansing. It's on, it's on tonight on ABC. Uh, but Ohio State, uh, the Ohio State University against uh, Sparty, number 25, Michigan State. What say you, sir? Okay, for this Ohio State talk right here, do you have the ability to take this soundbite and cut it out and and send it to me a little bit later on today if you have time? For what I'm going to say about Ohio State right here, I, I can yeah. Can you do I can that? Do whatever you need. Yes. What do you need me yeah. to do? Okay. All right. Take this whole Ohio State conversation we're about to have and <laughs> cut it down to just this Ohio State talk, and then send it to me later today. I'm going to send it to a buddy. And it'll okay. be cool to have Adam Jivet in here too. But uh, here's here's what I'm going to say about Ohio State. Ready? It's where you where you're going to start cutting the uh, the clip down, sending it to me. Uh, I think <laughs> right, Ohio I got State. You marked here. I, all right. I think Ohio State just might be the best team in the country this year. And whatever the spread is, and, and I don't know what the spread is in that Michigan State game tonight. But Ohio State is going, probably going to double or triple triple that spread and win by at least 30-plus in East Lansing because I think Ohio State is that talented. They are the fastest team I've seen. They're really physical. Chase Young is a beast on the defensive end. He is – nobody's talking about him, which is nuts to me. He is going to be the number one draft pick. Everybody wants to talk about Tua or one of these quarterbacks or maybe uh, Jonathan Tate, Taylor Tua. from Wisconsin. But Chase Young <laughs> will be the number one draft pick at defensive end this year. They roll out defensive ends like crazy. They had the Bosa brothers. Now they got Chase Young. Uh, Ryan Day is doing a ridiculous job. They look like a totally different team with him than they did under Urban Meyer. They look a lot more complete, a lot more physical, a lot faster. And to my eyes right now, they look like the best team in college football. End of the uh, tape. You can uh, cut out and send to me. All right, you got it. Sounds like you've been listening to Clay Travis because Clay Travis is pretty much on the same Not Ohio at all. State. <laughs> He's well, on the I same. I do listen as... to Clay Travis, but I don't. I don't take anything from his shows and put it into my own thing. Whatsoever. No, no. I just say that's. I'm just saying that. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, and if you don't listen to Clay Travis, we've got to get him on the show here. We're giving him all kinds of free promotions here. Go listen to Clay Travis. I listen to him every freaking day. I don't listen to the live show, even though he's live here in Indianapolis. I listen to the podcast when I get home at night. Don't have to worry about the commercials or anything. And and he's got another show also that is just in the podcast format. It's really good. It's called uh, Wins and Losses. Check that out. There's your Clay Travis plug. Uh, <laughs> he's he, we're, we're going to have him on and tweet later. Say, Clay, we talked about you on the show. We need to get you on the show. Uh, but actually, he's very, very accessible. He really is. And so uh, uh, I, I, I joke when I say we should have him on the show, but I think we should have him on the show. But he also, uh, I digress, but he also said Ohio State is the team. And he even said in, in his, on his TV show, the, the betting show, that, that Ohio State is the team to watch this year. And, and I was not able to connect with Adam because I did want to have him on. But I want to – let's, talk, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, go off lane here just a little bit. UCF. Uh, loses to Cincinnati. Let's talk about the implications of that game. Well, there's really no implications because UCF lost a couple weeks ago, too, so they were already eliminated from any playoff talk. Even if they went undefeated, they still weren't going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But now it's two losses. Uh, it, it's really their quarterback play. I mean, they, it's like they're on their fourth quarterback now the, since the end of last season because their starter went down the broken leg. Uh, his backup was really good, had a leg injury. The Brandon Wimbush – transfer from Notre Dame to UCF and he got banged up and now they're on their fourth quarterback so uh, just not their year if if they want to be taken seriously they need to 
get out of that group of five and join a real conference, or at least uh, schedule tough tough opponents. I know they schedule Stanford this year, but this is one of the worst Stanford teams in the past 40 years this year. So they're going to ride that Stanford win, but they've already lost two games. So there's really no, no impact for any kind of college football playoff as far as that game went last night. Well, yeah, and, you know, at the beginning of the season, we were talking about, and, you know, at the end of last year, we were talking about how UCF got 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 snubbed and how UCF this, UCF that. This year, I, like you said, there's no the, – it's, it's it's pretty clear. But I, I also talk about the implications of that game. I think they may have kicked themselves out of any bowl consideration, I, at least the New Year's right, Day well, bowl consideration. Oh, yeah, definitely that. They're not – they won't get a New Year's Six. They just got to get six wins, and they'll they'll – Get into whatever Frosted Flakes bowl game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, New Year's Six, <laughs> no, nothing, nothing like it. Nothing that uh, you know, uh, not not a bowl game with a with a name attached to. It, you know what I mean? You know, you were talking about we were talking about Clay Travis, and I don't want to say the name of the of the company here because he does endorse them and he gets paid for it. We don't, so we don't want to do that. But he endorses a razor. Did you hear his conversation about his razor and the mustache and the issue that he had there? Yeah, I did see that. He uh, shaved it down and kind of triangled it off by accident. Yeah, because this razor that he endorses is, like, really cool. So I thought, I'm going to go buy this. So I did. I bought the razor, and I and I got it out of the box. It's really nice. I mean, I have to – I'm not going to get in the name of the company, but it's, it's a very good razor, okay? So I, uh, I'm 51, so hair pops up everywhere. I'm in the shower, and I'm just kind of – filling where hairs are and there's some hair by my ear and whatever and I'm just like shaving it off and then I'm finishing up my shower and I'm seeing blood just come down I'm like where is this blood coming from I couldn't find anything on my face when I got out of the shower I nicked my ear like nobody's business and I'm like putting pressure on my ear I finally got it to stop got to the office I'm in a meeting and blood just starts dripping on my desk and I'm like what the heck so I had to Get up and leave the meeting. Go get a Band-Aid and put it on my ear. So that said, Clay Travis got the the Hitler mustache because of this razor that's really good. But it makes your face feel like a smooth (laughs) baby's butt, Rick. I know know you want to feel my face now, don't you? (laughs) I, no, I know you okay. want to feel my face. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, let's quickly get through some of these games. We only got a couple of minutes uh, left here, but um, so yeah, I, I I almost cut my ear off. I thought, but uh, anyway, we were talking about Clay Travis in the box to the razor is uh, here by, by me here in the Balance Studio, and I I thought, well, we were already talking about Clay Travis. Man, I could have lost an ear. That'd be one ear, Tom, right? <laughs> Number five, LSU versus Utah State. Hey, just Pac- be, uh, uh, just, just be glad you weren't shaving up the uh, bikini line or whatever down there. I know. Wasn't doing the manscaping, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, <laughs> this razor, when you figure out what it is, they have all kinds of lotions and stuff, and they have a, an undercarriage uh, uh, stuff you can use, too, and, uh, you know, make it all neat down there and, and uh, so, uh, you know, if you're manscaping, be very careful with this razor. That's what I'm saying. Be very, very careful if you're if you're doing the manscape. Let's get back on track here. Uh, we, we've given people an early morning visual they 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 don't want. Number five, LSU versus U, 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 Utah State, not the other Utah, which is off this weekend on the SEC Network. Did you say LSU and Utah State? Is that what you did? <laughs> Number five, LSU versus uh, Utah yeah, okay. State. All right, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. The other Utah's <laughs> off. Okay, well, LSU is one of the uh, – if it's not Bama or, or Georgia in the SEC, I, I feel like it's uh, it's LSU this year. So uh, this is going to be another one of those murders, one of those bloody ear situations of a game where it's just going to be a <laughs> nonstop bleeding – for Utah, <laughs> Utah State, uh, and it wouldn't matter if it's the other Utah either. Uh, this is going to be a just this is going to be a whooping, you know. But <laughs> the bloody ear is going to be a a, a, a per- permanent staple of the balance. Number six, Oklahoma State at Kansas Jayhawks on ABC at noonish. 
Yeah, Oklahoma probably has the uh, the hot 